There are new questions about school safety following the arrest of a former sheriff's deputy who failed to stop the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Scott Peterson left jail on bond yesterday. He's charged with child neglect for allegedly not doing enough to protect the students. A new article in the Tampa Bay Times asked, could an armed teacher be arrested like a Parkland cop? Scott Peterson. Florida passed the law last month allowing teachers to carry guns on campus. Emily Mahoney wrote that article. She's a politics reporter for the Tampa Bay Times and the Miami Herald, and she's joining us now on the phone from St. Petersburg, Florida. Emily, thank you so much for being with us. Um, can, you, can you explain what the parameters are for teachers carrying guns under the new law there in Florida? Sure, and thanks so much for having me. So the Guardian program is, is what it's called, and it was created actually last year, um, shortly after the shooting in Parkland that left 17 people dead and 17 more injured. And that program originally allowed just school staff and not classroom teachers to carry guns, and this year they uh, undid that exception. But essentially, in order to carry a gun on campus, uh, first the district must opt into the program, um, and then the individual teacher must volunteer um, to be part of that program, and uh, they would undergo screening by their local sheriff's office or another sheriff's office that agrees to train them. And um, that, that training would involve active shooter drill or active shooter training and things like that. And then they would be allowed to have a gun in their classroom. So now we learn, though, of the arrest of the officer that was working at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Should teachers who choose to carry guns in the classrooms, should they be concerned about the charges that Scott Peterson faces? Well, that's a very interesting question, and I think it's a question that we have only started to contemplate um, as this arrest is still very recent. But uh, I, I spoke to the sponsor of the bill uh, that, like I said, undid that exception this year that allowed classroom teachers to participate in that program to have guns on campus. And he said that it is pos he believes it's possible that teachers could face similar criminal charges uh, if there was a case of extreme neglect. Um, with a shooting. And granted, you know, the, uh, there's a very prominent sheriff here in Florida, uh, the Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Galtieri, who's been in charge of analyzing all of the failures that led up to the Parkland shooting. And, and he says that, you know, that that's not really something that he sees ever really happening because the, the um, Scott Peterson case was such a case of extreme neglect. And this really is unprecedented in terms of criminal charges for a law enforcement officer for inaction during a crisis. And so I, I still think it's an open question in terms of the precedent, but it certainly seems like it is a possibility. You know, what's interesting also is we've done, I've done stories where we've spoken to superintendents who have decided to arm uh, teachers. The understanding and part of the training that they go through is that they are responsible for confronting an active shooter. They cannot have the responsibility of being armed and then shirk that responsibility when a danger presents itself uh, to the students. So most of the teachers that I spoke to who are going to be armed uh, know that they are risking their lives in taking this, uh, on, this mission underway, mm -hmm. right? On the flip side, though, I wonder about police arriving on the scene and not knowing who the active shooter is because you've got a bunch of teachers with weapons looking for that person. Absolutely. And this is all, these are all questions that have come up repeatedly during the course of the debate in the legislature. I cover the state capitol in Florida. I'm uh, usually in Tallahassee. And so, you know, these are all questions that have been raised by opponents of the bill throughout both last year's discussion, shortly after the Parkland shooting, and also this year when they expanded the Guardian program again. And lawmakers have emphasized that they're going to revisit this bill, uh, or this law rather, every year for the the next few years to continually try to answer some of these questions. And a lot of this is frankly left up to local districts and how they want to implement this, whether they want to have teachers put on a neon yellow sleeve when they pull out their gun in an active shooter situation to try to let law enforcement know who they are. But I mean, there's a lot of concern just in general here in Florida about um, unintended harm caused by having more guns in schools. We've uh, done uh, you know, a number of stories, obviously, on Parkland. We've spoken to parents. In fact, we spoke to two parents just this week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based on some of the reporting that I've seen and the parents that we spoke to, they um, 
they were applauding the decision to charge Scott Peterson. I'm wondering, though, this was not something that it seemed like the Parkland parents were really campaigning for. They are focused on, you know, meeting with lawmakers and, and uh, you know, and gun legislation and stuff like that, uh, not punishing the people in the schools who had been hired to protect their children. So have you heard any reaction from these parents about uh, the decision to arm teachers? Yes, and that's a that's a good question because in in that question I would say that the Parkland parents are not um, uniform in their answers. Uh, there is one Parkland parent in particular, Andy Pollock, um, whose daughter was killed during the shooting last year, who has been extremely active um, and I believe is is uh, either expected to be reconfirmed or has a pending con confirmation on the state board of education, and uh, he has you know talked about he's in full support of the governor and full support of what the legislature did to arm teachers. Um, but then there are, are, are many others who are very hesitant about the decision to allow teachers to carry guns. And as I mentioned before, it is optional but on the part of districts. And so, so far, I think it's important to note that only four districts in the state of Florida have said that they will arm their teachers and they are in fairly rural areas where law enforcement is farther away and i think that that has a lot to do uh with the conversation happening in each district um but you know it regardless of where it is it's still a hot topic issue here in florida because it's dealing with the safety of school children which is something that really concerns everybody and really i think is personal for everybody yeah, right. that's true. Uh, well, uh, Emily Mahoney, thank you so much for letting us know what's going on in your part of the world. Thank you.